Uh, let's look tonight to the book of Job, uh, chapter number 19, in my daily Bible reading. Uh, came across this verse, or three verses, verse 25 through 27. We're going to look at them uh, tonight. Yesterday at the funeral home, saw so this lady and... Uh, She's probably thankful I didn't ask her this because I was, for years, uh, let's see, we've been going from Andrew says, uh, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. <clears throat> and though after my skin uh, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins uh, be consumed with me, within me. So as we uh, look, look back up to verse number 25, uh, Job had a lot of things going on in his life. And uh, on top of everything that he had going on, uh, he wanted to die, and uh, but that, that's what his wife told him anyway. Was uh, won't you just curse God and die? And he said, uh, you know, you you talking like a foolish woman there. But he uh, knew that one day that he too, like his children, had died. That he was going to die, but he also knew that he was going to ra be raised again, and that in his, as it says there, in his flesh that he was going to see his Redeemer because his Redeemer was alive and his Redeemer was was well. Uh, one group of writers points us back to uh, Leviticus. So let's look back to Leviticus here for just a minute. Leviticus, uh, I think it's uh, 25 maybe. I've got one, got one note, and then somebody else got another note there. But I see my note, and we're going to go with it. Uh, Leviticus 25 and verse number 29. Well, let me let me check over in here. I got might have the wrong chapter and different verse. Let me let me check for just a minute. No, nope, I believe it's twenty five nineteen. Uh, this is talking about the the kinsman redeemer and. Uh, Leviticus 25 and verse 9, uh, excuse me, 25 and verse 29 says, And if a man uh, sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. Now, uh, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Melanie's not here tonight. But it, it's my understanding that if something goes into foreclosure and you lose it, you have a year after it's sold that you can get it back. And right there's in the Bible, you know, people that's, that's get rid of the Bible, but that, that law there is still in existence today. Uh, redeem it. Now, uh, I've shared with you how... Uh, Amy had that coupon, and she, she's always, ever since I've known her, been a couponer, and uh, we didn't have no china picked out, and but she redeemed that coupon, had her name on it, and somehow or another, I don't know what the process was for her being chosen, but because she redeemed it, we now are the proud owners of a 12-place setting china. So... The Bible speaks 
of Christ being our redeemer. It talks about the kinsman redeemer. And as well as if somebody sells a piece of property, they have a year that they can go and get it back. So let's look back to, to Job for just a minute. And then we're going to turn over to 1 Corinthians 15. David, when he wrote Psalm 23, said, The Lord is my shepherd. Not, not a shepherd, not the shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd. And notice what Job says here about his Redeemer. It wasn't, I, I know that a Redeemer lives. It was, I know that my Redeemer lives. Uh, Matthew Henry wrote uh, that there is a Redeemer provided for fallen man, and Jesus is that Redeemer. The word goel, G-O-E-L, is used for the next of kin to whom by the law of Moses the right of redeeming a mortgage estate did belong, as we read over there in Leviticus 25. Our heavenly inheritance was mortgaged by sin. We are selves utterly unable, unable to redeem it. Christ is near of kin to us, the next kinsman that is able to redeem it. He paid our debt, satisfied God's justice for sin, and so has taken off the mortgage and made a new settlement for the inheritance. Now, I don't know if you've ever had anybody put a lien on your property, but... Uh, Melissa and Amy, Melissa was about 12 months pregnant with Jackson, the oldest, oldest one. She was uh, just due any day, and her and Amy had a wreck. And uh, when I got to the emergency room, neither one of them had been seen about, and I was standing there thinking, you're about to give birth just any day, and they hadn't checked you out. No. So anyway. They was both okay. Baby was okay. They was, Amy and Melissa was okay. About a week later, James, we got a letter in the mail. Hospital done put a lien on our property. We ain't even got a bill yet, but it was going to be on there until the bill had been paid. And, uh, you know, they had insurance. So. I don't know. But that, that's been several moons ago. They could, we can't pay the debt that we owe. Christ paid it for us. He's a living redeemer. And down there, he also says that uh, though worms destroy my body, though, uh, though, worms, uh, though after my skin, worms destroy this body. And then he turns around and says, in my flesh, I shall see God. You say, well, how in the world, you know, he says one thing, and then he goes off on something else. Well, turn over with me to 1 Corinthians 15. We alluded to some of this the other day, and there's a song in the, our song book here that talks about all that. One eighty six. In this one, 227, I believe it was, in the Good Springs hymnal. Uh, if anybody from Good Springs is listening. Let's look down to 1 Corinthians 15, and uh, let's look at verse number 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Now, we, we looked recently at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 where it says that uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, our soul will be present with the Lord. Our body returned to the dust of the earth which it, from whence it came. So uh, how shall the dead be raised up and what body do they come? Now, uh, I don't know... Well, J. Vernon McGee goes into great detail about 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 the body in in his uh, discussion of First Corinthians fifteen, 
that some people say it's a spiritual body, and uh, he tries his best to hammer down the point that it's going to be a body, a new body, but still a body. So how will the dead be raised up, and in what body do they come? Paul writes, Thou foo, that, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. In other words, uh, those of you plant a garden, those of you plant any kind of seed, that seed's got to decay before any life's going to come out of it. You say, well, I, I put mine in dirt first and then set it out. Well, you put somebody put it in dirt, and it, it decayed, and then life sprung up from that, and that's, that's what he's talking about here. Verse 37, And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It, it uh, might by chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every need his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the uh, celestial is one and the glory of the ter terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the res resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. This body that we have uh, presently would not be able to withstand to be in the glory of God. But this new body, this incorruptible body, will be. Verse 43 says, It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. But it's still, the, the thing we need to look at is, it's not just a spirit, but it is a spiritual body. It is still a body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which was made a quickening spirit, howbeit that which was not first, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as so is the heavenly, which also also that such are they also that are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the earthy, and praise God, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So Job, in all of his problems he's got going on, because, I mean, all of his children's gone, his wife done told him to curse God and die. His so-called friends show up and tell him how lousy of a human being he is. And the youngest, the, the fourth guy, uh, waited till everybody else got done, and he speaks up. And then finally God sets them all straight. So if you look back to Job 19, He says in verse, again in verse 26 that that body that he had, that's right there at the present time. And, uh, you know, he got down to a point where he was taking broken pots and uh, scratching his skin with it, tried to get some kind of relief. He knew that one day he was going to die and that that body that he had presently was going to decay. But he also knew this. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Now, there's uh, the song that uh, I asked that lady if she's ever sang uh, lately, because I've heard her sing it, because every time we had a youth gathering and she was there, uh, 
She sang it because I asked her to. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? And then uh, I know my Redeemer lives. All of creation testifies, this life within me cries, I know my Redeemer lives. Same words that, uh, some of them, most of them, same words that uh, Job said. And then my feller by the name of uh, C.M. Bradford wrote these words, kind of along the same lines, first part of it is, I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. A token of his love he gives, a pledge of liberty. And there's about one, two, three, three more verses there. And he wrote, verse, the last verse says, when, you, and when, when God is mine and I am his, a paradise possessed, I taste unutterable bliss and ever Lasting rest. Look at verse 27 of Job 19. Now, y'all have heard me, some of, most of you have, do this that, uh, like Jimmy, for example. Me and Jimmy done made it to heaven. Jimmy ain't going to have to come up here and up to me and say, Brother Marty, uh, there's Jesus right there. I think each one of us going to know who he is. Look at verse 27. Whom, so yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. We talked about some blind folks Sunday. Fanny Crosby seen him. You know, she wrote Visions of Rapture Now Burst on My Sight. She she seen him. And I believe uh there's some other folks. Although they didn't have physical eyesight. They knew who the Lord was and they, they have seen him. And and Job says I'm going to see him myself with my eyes. I'm going to behold him and not another. In other words, nobody's going to have to look upon the Lord for him. He's going to be right there with him. We'll get to that last part of that verse here in just a minute. The last part of verse 27. So in my flesh shall I say God. If you look up with me to 1 John chapter 3, verse number 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 2. Those of us that know the Lord, we're going to get to see him. Now, uh, I've read somebody's writing not too long ago that said that uh, we wouldn't be able to see God. You know, there, there's some people that say that when we die, we ain't going to heaven. I don't know what where, where they get that from. But they pastor big churches and got thousands of folks sitting there listening to them. And there's some that says, well, we ain't going to be able to see God. Well, Job said he was. Verse 2, First uh, John chapter 3. Beloved now, we are the, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. 
Now, we've read about the new body we're going to have, the incorruptible body that we're going to have. But it, it says there, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Amen. For we shall see him as he is. Verse 3 says, Everyone that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Now, a few weeks ago, we preached out of Revelation 21. I think we started in verse number 4. Maybe. I think it was verse 4. Let's go over and read verse 3. Revelation 21 and verse number 3. So I'd like to meet up with that fella that says we ain't going to see God and ask him what he thinks about this verse. Anyway, I probably won't ever get the opportunity. This side of heaven, anyway. Because if I do and I see that fella, I'm going to say, right, over yonder he is. Look at him. And that's just extra. Verse 3, Revelation 21. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. His dwelling place is with men. He shall, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. But, you know, there's folks saying we ain't going to see him, but hey, sounds like to me that we will. But that's, that's me from Grassy, Alabama saying all that. Now, if you turn back, let's get that last part of uh, Genesis 19, 27. So Job said that I'm going to see him myself, not with the eyes of another, but it's going to be my own eyes is going to behold him. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, James, did you ever plow a mule? I did it enough to say, yep, I did it. Jimmy, I ain't no use me asking Daddy. He's, yeah. Steve, you ever you ever plow a mule, Steve? Yeah. yeah. Well, thankfully, Granddaddy had his trying good enough. Had them blinders on it, on it. Jackie, you, you done this? Sandy? Yeah. Justin? Even a horse and buggy or anything? Yeah. Plenty of horsepower in that, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I did just enough to know that uh, you needed them reins in your hand. You know, standing back watching, you know, if they wanted to go right, they'd pull right and left and pull left. If they wanted to whoa, hey, you jerk back on both of them. And then I got to reading after we got horses that uh, there's certain kind of bits that if you put in the horse's mouth and do any yanking much, they ain't going to like it. And I'm thinking, well, if I'm wanting them to stop, that's the kind I want. That's the kind I was told to get. Charles, I think Charles Bullard told me to get that kind. That's the kind I got where when you pull back on the reins, it's going to stop them. So I think we all got the idea of what a reins, reins are. I think uh, Jethro on the Beverly Hillbillies, I think at one time he even had ropes instead of the steering wheel, I believe, on that old truck, if I remember correctly. And uh, something other was wrong with it, and that's why he fixed it. So I'm going to say, God, I shall see him for myself, verse 27, mine eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. This is something that I've learned uh, over the past uh, mm, 20 years or so. I started having a little bit of kidney problems and uh, around Jimmy, Jimmy Ellis, Mr. Dora, 
how your kidneys go is how you're going to go. By the way, the word in the Bible translated rain means kidney. So after Glendora's transplant, I was over there the next, I didn't go that day, but the next morning I got there, and those of you that knew her before, her color was already back in her that next morning. And it, it, it was a miracle. And I remember going over there with them to the doctor, and there'd be a waiting room packed full, people standing around. And I said, Jimmy, did all these people here have a, I think I might have said a kidney transplant. He said, well, not necessarily a kidney transplant, but all these people either had one or they're here with family that had some kind of transplant. So Matthew Henry says this, all my desires are sum, summed up and concluded in this. This will crown and complete them all. Let me have this, and I shall have nothing more to desire. It is enough. It is all. And that's, I think actually uh, he's quoting, uh, it says, uh, David. So with, with this, the, the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. So he's, he's quoting that from, and I don't, I don't see a, that he gave a reference for that. But the reins, that's what controls us. That's what controls when you're uh, operating with a horse. That's what operates that horse, so to speak, and gets, gets them to go, or the mule, get them to go whichever way, get them to stop. So though my reins be consumed with me, within me, one day, I'm going to say God with, in my flesh with my own eyes. Why? He says, because I know that my Redeemer lives. Now, uh, folks get certificates. Now, I hate to bust people's bubble, but uh, some of you know this. Uh, when somebody graduates from college and they go to, up through there and get their, what we think is a diploma, that diploma jacket's empty. They just got them something to hold on to. So they've worked for four years or more for that diploma, and it's just make-believe when they go through the ceremony. But yet he, Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives. We might work for that diploma. God's done all the work for us in redeeming us. He gave his son Jesus to die on the cross. So I'm going to see him, Job said. Nobody's going to have to see him for me. I'm going to see him. And friends, that's faith. Maybe we all have that same faith about us. Anything uh, this evening before we dismiss? All right, let's uh, have a word of prayer and we'll close out tonight. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. And Lord, uh, we lift up those, Lord, we mentioned for prayer this evening. We lift them up to you. Lord, you know each and every need. And Lord, uh, take us safely home tonight and return us again Sunday to worship you again. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.